is it that invoking the name of Stephen King in a story has become the universal shorthand for horror? Seriously, throw a brick through the horror video game, movie, and apparently anime aisle at your local blockbuster and try not to hit an explicit Stephen King reference square in the back of the head. I get it, sort of. The books are popular. Lots of movies have been made. Everyone knows who the fuck he is and God knows who that he writes horror. But holy shit is the poor bastard typecast. I know people who still won't watch Stand By Me because they say horror movies make them queasy, but why not throw in some Poe references or some Shelley? Hell, reference R.L. Stein for all I care. And why the fuck do they talk about Stephen King in Another? This is supposed to be Japanese. Have they no cultural pride? Well, I've seen a lot of J-horror movies, so pride aside, maybe they're just too embarrassed to make reference to whole Japan's horror genre. Then again, I wouldn't call Stephen King particularly scary either. Such it is with Another, the latest in the line of modern horror anime, a trend started with the violent lollies of Higurashi, continuing on into Umeneko, and lately capped off with last season's Mirai Nikki. Hell, throw school days in there too. You know why. Like Stephen King, in pretty much any horror movie ever made with less than an R rating, Another is scary in a safe, this doesn't happen in real life kind of way. Japan has its own brand of horror, dating back to ancient legends of female ghosts that wander through snowstorms and umbrellas with a single eye and a foot for a handle. To Westerners, J-horror is seen as campy and silly. The CGI might not be as good as Hollywood's attempts, the expressions of the ghosts may be more hilarious than scary, and plots may leave too much to the imagination. While Western horror movies like to show as much gore as possible and give their ghosts motivation, J-horror likes to leave it ambiguous, and censorship laws make showing excessive entrails impossible. But though J-horror may confuse Western audiences, the Japanese totally get it. Take another's plot, for example. A young man on the cusp of adulthood moves back to his childhood home after living in Tokyo for a while. He goes to school where he encounters mysterious circumstances no one will explain to him, and mysteriously beautiful girls who act kind of off at times. Try not to think too hard about how incredibly familiar this all sounds. If I had to describe it, I'd say it's as if Higurashi fucked Angel Beats. As the plot progresses, the protagonist becomes embroiled in a deadly mystery having something to do with ghosts, people dying, etc, etc. It's less trite and boring than it sounds, though. While the first few episodes had a slow, meandering pace, it starts to ramp up around episode 6 with bodies dropping fast and a sense of an unmistakable dread building. It can get pretty compelling despite the somewhat cliché cliffhangers and odd inclusion of anime tropes like the beach episode, however inverted they may be. Another deals in western horror tropes such as mothers dying in childbirth and teenagers getting caught up in the supernatural. But if you really want to find the horror in it, you need to find out what's so scary about the Japanese countryside, the number four, and other common elements of J-horror. I mean, when was the last time you saw a western horror movie with a curse in it that wasn't caused by an ancient civilization? And don't say the grudge. Also, I just have to share this with you guys. Behold, literally the greatest thing in anime ever! Misaki! <laughs> yeah, so, if you want some context to that, well, I guess you'll just have to watch yet another anime. But um bum shh. <laughs> Oh, my God.